Hi there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to continue with Lesson 2 Sampling Methods. This is actually Part 4, and we'll start by talking about the importance of having a sample that represents our population well. That's the whole point. We're trying to infer something about a population. We don't want to have to ask every member of the population, so we're going to take a sample, and we're going to try to do that in a way that it really represents the population as well as possible given whatever resources we have available for data collection. Random sampling is a good way of minimizing sampling bias. This would be where you do it in such a way that every individual of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. There are several methods of random sampling, each with pros and cons. We're going to talk about simple random samples, systematic samples, stratified samples, and cluster samples. These are all random, and we'll talk about why they're random. And we'll start with simple random, which is the best kind. But before we get into defining the types or methods of sampling, let's discuss what kind of errors you can have. You can have non-sampling error, which isn't related to the actually actual sampling method you're using. They're not related. There may be something like maybe we just don't have a large enough sample or we have a defective device that we're using. We also have sampling error. In reality, a sample will never be exactly representative of the population. There are no perfect samples, but uh, we do our best. And as a rule, the larger the sample, the smaller the sampling error. In statistics, a sampling bias is created when a sample is collected from a population and some members of the population are not as likely to be chosen as others. So sampling bias is defined as a method of sampling in which not every member has an equal voice or an equal chance at contributing being a part of the sample. So as I mentioned before, simple random sample is the very best one. This is GOAT sampling method, GOAT, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time sampling method. It has the quality of being random in that each individual has an equal chance of being chosen, but it has the added benefit that each sample of size n has an equal chance of being chosen. All right, so let's talk about what a simple random sample is in the form of an example. Suppose Lisa wants to find three study buddies in her pre-calculus class, which has 31 members not including herself. To choose a simple random sample of size 3, Lisa could put all 31 names in a hat, close her eyes, and pick out three names. That would be a situation where each classmate had an equal chance of being chosen, and also every possible collection of three classmates has an equal chance of being chosen. She could use more sophisticated methods, creating a data frame and using a random number generator. Here is an example of a data frame. Notice that she has all the names, looks like the last names, of the students in her class. There are 31 students. The first student she's assigned the number 0 and the last student the number 30. So she could now take a random number generator using technology. Let's talk about how we would do it in Excel. You would use the function rand between and put in the boundaries 0, 30. And if you use that command three times, you'll get three different numbers randomly chosen between 0 and 30. And then you could see who they correspond to in the class. You can also use the TI-8384 calculator. And I don't spend time in this class teaching how to use that calculator, although I do allow you to use it if you really want to. I prefer Excel, and I've chosen to make that the um, the technology of choice. And so normally I will give you lessons on how to use Excel. The thing is, I'm not going to require you to use this function for any of the exercises in this course, so I've chosen not to include that in this video so as not to make it too long. But if you're interested in it, please let me know and I will make a video for that. Systematic sample. Randomly selecting a starting point and take every nth piece of data from a listing of the population. All right, so this is not the simple random sample, the SRS. This is another type of random sample called systematic. For example, suppose you have to do a phone survey. Your phone book contains 20,000 residents listings. 
you must choose 400 names for the sample, number the population, and then use a simple random sample to pick a number that represents the first name in the sample, then choose every 50th name thereafter until you have a total of 400 names. Is this random? And before you answer this question, you want to think about the definition of random. Every person in the population must have an equal chance of being chosen. So oftentimes, if you're trying to determine if something is random, you want to start by determining what is the chance each person has of being chosen, and is everyone given that same chance? So um, before I give the answer, remember, you can always pause, back up, whatever you need to do to think about it. Yes, each residence has a 1 in 20,000 chance of being chosen, right? So there's 20,000 residence listings that could be the first one chosen and then thereafter every 50th name. So by choosing that first starting point, you have actually already chosen all the other names that are going to be chosen. So each person does have a 1 in 20,000 chance of being chosen. Is it simple random? Does every single collection of 400 names have an equal chance of being chosen. Now, whenever you're trying to determine if it's simple random, if you can think of one example, one collection of, say in this example, 400 names that is not possible while using this method, then you've found a counterexample which shows it is not simple random. So it's often easier to prove that it's not simple random with a counterexample than to try to think of all the reasons that it might be. So what's a good counterexample? The one that I thought of is that you could never get a sample of 400 names that were in alphabetical order. Now let's talk about a cluster sample. You'll divide the population into clusters or groups, then randomly select a few clusters. All of the members from those selected clusters will be included in the sample. For example, suppose that your college has 20 departments. If you randomly sample four departments from your college population, every person in each of the four selected departments make up the sample. Is this random? Yes, it is random because you have a 4 in 20 chance of being chosen since each person, assumingly, is only assigned to one department and four of those departments will be chosen. Is it simple random? Can you think of a counterexample that proves it's not simple random? Remember, you can always pause before I give the answers. Think about it. The answer is no. And a counterexample could be you could never get a sample that includes a few people from all 20 of the departments. Now we look at a stratified sample. Divide the population into strata or categories and then randomly and proportionately select some individuals from every stratum. So this sounds similar to cluster sampling. The difference is that when we did a cluster sample, we randomly selected the actual clusters. In this case, we're going to use all of the, the categories, the strata, and we're just going to get a few from each of every single stratum in the population. For example, suppose you have a population of 100 people that you stratify by hair color and determine which percentage is made up of each hair color. Let's say you have a population with 30 people that have brown hair, 20 people that have black hair, 40 people that have blonde, and 10 people that have red. Then randomly select 10% of each hair color. That 10% is arbitrary. It's just up to the researcher what they want to do. So we chose 10% of each hair color for convenience to make this example easy to follow. So that you would have three, right? 10% of 30 is three, three hair, uh, brown haired people, 20 people with black hair, that's 10% would be two, two people with black hair in the sample, and so on, until we get a sample of 10. Is this random? Right? Can you think of what the percentage is or the likelihood for each person to be chosen? It's one in 10, 10% chance of being chosen, and every single person has an equal chance of being chosen because these 30 brown haired people, we're going to choose 10% of them, so they have a 10% chance of being chosen, and so on. Simple random, can you think of a counterexample that shows it's not simple random? How about if you could not get a collection of 10 people with black hair? And finally, we have the convenience sample. It is what it sounds like. It's not random, it's just data that are collected from subjects that are readily available. For example, 
let's go back to the example about Lisa trying to find three study buddies. Instead of doing a simple random sample, what if she was kind of lazy and she just kind of went with whatever was easiest and she asked the three students sitting closest to her in the classroom? Why is it not random? Classmates that are sitting farther away from her have no chance of being chosen, while those sitting close to her have a high chance of being chosen. Is it simple random? Well, it's not random in the first place, so it's certainly not going to be simple random, but let's just try to find a counterexample. You could not get a collection of three students other than those seated closest to Lisa. So that concludes the definition of all the different sampling methods and how to recognize the difference between random and simple random samples.